He was our Edison, our Disney, our Da Vinci. Yes, Steve Jobs was the most successful businessman of our generation, but deep down, he was an artist who worked in metal and glass, plastic and pixels. And the ideas that live inside his machines completely change our definition of form and function. We thank you, Steve Jobs. For making us love Apple. For making technology into art. For a handheld internet. For still changing the world. For saving lives with wit. For spreading American ingenuity worldwide. For exploring beyond our reach. A unique, far-reaching, irreplaceable mind. For making the past to run. Steve Jobs was insanely great. He made turtlenecks sexy again. A meticulous attention to detail. 43 patented inventions. Check Wikipedia. Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. But accustomed as I am to public speaking, I'd like to share with you a match and I saw the, the first time I met an IBM mainframe. Never trust a computer you can't with. Obviously, I can talk, but right now, I'd like to sit back and listen. So it is with considerable pride that I introduce a man who's been like a father to me, Steve Jobs. Okay, it's April 20th, 1995. This is the uh, Smithsonian interview for uh, Steve Jobs. Okay, I'd like to begin, Steve, with some background uh, biographical information. Tell us about uh, when you were born, where, your parents, your family. Sure. Uh, I was born in San Francisco, California, USA, um, planet Earth, on February 24th, 1955. Um, I could go into a lot of details of my youth, but I don't know that anybody would really care about that too much. Only mine in 300 years. Cause some mistakes will be made along the way. That's good, because at least some decisions are being made along the way. And we'll find the mistakes, we'll fix them. Let's switch over some backups here. I have a feeling we might have the same problem. <laughs> there we go, yes, I know that. I don't want to sell you the data network. Apple is like a ship with a hole in the bottom, leaking water. And my job is to get the ship pointed in the right direction. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Apple's high-tech products have inspired fervor. Oh, it's beautiful. It's very sexy. Defining cool consumerism for a worldwide tribe, hyped by the man who personified the brand. It works like magic. They look so good, you kind of want to lick them. It's unbelievable. No one had quite that mixture of arrogance, humility, talent, and presence which Steve Jobs had. He's changed music. He's changed movies. He's changed computers a couple of times. He's created industries that we didn't think we needed. Jobs was a perfectionist. To Steve, everything was about taste, just like someone writing a great piece of music and a tyrant. Steve Jobs yelling at you with his full force is kind of a, a pretty frightening thing for most people. How did a drug-taking college dropout create one of the most successful corporations in the world? Virtual world at our fingertips. And we call it the iPad. Before he turned household tools into objects of desire. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone before he changed the way we are entertained. And you can watch it on your iPod. Steve Jobs was a baby his parents didn't want. He was adopted by a working class couple in Silicon Valley. And to their dismay, he dropped out of college after six months. But he was still curious enough to drop in on classes that interested him. And at age 20, along with buddy Steve Wozniak, he set up a workshop in his folks' garage and set out to move the power of the computer from the laboratory to your lap. The penalty for failure 
uh, for going and trying to start a company in this valley is non-existent. That brimming confidence was validated when they launched the Macintosh. Now I'd like to show you Macintosh in person. We worked hard, and in 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of us in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. This 2005 Stanford commencement speech is the only time Jobs ever spoke publicly about the most vulnerable moments in his life, including the power struggle within Apple that forced him out of the company he founded just as he was hitting his stride. And so at 30, I was out, and very publicly out. What had been the focus of my entire adult life was gone, and it was devastating. I really didn't know what to do for a few months. I felt that I had let the previous generation of entrepreneurs down, that I had dropped the baton as it was being passed to me. I was a very public failure, and I even thought about running away from the valley. But something slowly began to dawn on me. I still loved what I did. The turn of events at Apple had not changed that one bit. I'd been rejected, but I was still in love. And so I decided to start over. In his 30s, he met his wife, started another computer company called Next, and took over Pixar, changing animation forever. My name is Woody, and this is Andy's room. In 96, Apple bought Next, and soon Jobs was back in charge, leading a digital renaissance. He took decisive command, cutting a bloated product line to just four useful and artful machines, and selling them in the kind of stores no one had ever seen. Since the return of Steve Jobs, Apple stock soared more than 7,000%, turning that garage startup into a $350 billion company, second only in value to ExxonMobil. In a valley of geniuses, his myth grew to Thomas Edison meets Willy Wonka proportions, keeping his products... Are you using that currently as your phone? I haven't been able to because I can't take it out in public. And his life fiercely under wraps. Not even his board knew of his battle with pancreatic cancer. I just wanted to mention this. <laughs> and he didn't reveal he needed a liver transplant until after the procedure. I now have the liver of a mid-20s person who died in a car crash. But while his body grew frail in recent years, that mind, that drive, never quit. Good morning. A standing ovation welcomed his surprise appearance at the spring launch of the iPad 2. We've been working on this product for a while, and I just didn't want to miss today, so <laughs> thank you. But then came this letter in August. I've always said that if there ever came a day when I could no longer meet my duties, I would be the first to let you know, he wrote. Unfortunately, that day has come. Here was a man who set out to change the way we work and play. Everything will be portable. People want large color screens that they can put photographs on. People want motion video. Here was a man driven anew by the clock and that burning need to build something great. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet, <laughs> death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart.